Oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth. And swiftly runs his command. He makes his world known to Jacob. To Israel, his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. Senior Daniel McHugh, my reflection for the second week after Christmas. This is the only son who is nearest to the father's heart who has made him known. The news on Christmas Day of the launch of the James Webb Telescope to study galaxy, star and planet formation in the universe led to questions about life beyond the earth. How would, how might new forms of life impact on the teaching of the church about the coming of Jesus and our ideas about God and creation? Interestingly, NASA had enlisted 24 theologians to take part in a study at the Center for Theological Inquiry at Princeton University in New Jersey with a view to building bridges of understanding by convening theologians, scientists, scholars and policy makers to think together and inform public thinking on global concerns. Dr. Andrew Davison, a priest and theologian at the University of Cambridge, is one of the theologians and he is reported as saying non-religious people seem to overestimate the challenges that religious people would experience if faced with evidence of alien life. The head of the Vatican Observatory said recently that there is no conflict between believing in God and the possibility of extraterrestrial brothers, perhaps more evolved than humans. There is nothing in Scripture that says there can't be some form of life elsewhere. What we do know is that Jesus came in space and time and history to save sinful humanity. The communication of this central truth of our faith and its implications for all aspects of life has been at the heart of evangelization from the earliest days. How it is done comes to the fore in the Gospel of the second Sunday after Christmas. The Gospel is taken from St. John, who is speaking to the Greek 
Gentile world of the first century AD. At Christmas Midnight Mass, the Gospel was from St. Luke chapter 2, and these words were central in the appearance of the angel to the shepherds. I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. On the second Sunday after Christmas, we have these words in St. John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was made flesh. He lived among us, and we saw his glory. John's prologue, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18, read on the second Sunday after Christmas, uses the Greek logos, or word, taken from ancient Greek philosophy to describe Jesus. It was similar to the Hebrew concept of wisdom, God's companion and helper in creation. A Greek philosopher, Philo, merged these two themes, and the Gospel adapted his description of the Logos, or Word, applying it to Jesus, the incarnation of the Logos. The Church, through its great teachers and theologians, has continued to speak to the world of its day, using language that can be understood by those coming from different perspectives and mindsets to the issues that face all humanity. Such has been our experience in more recent times with the approach of the great issues tackled in the Catholic social teaching, such as climate change, approached by Pope Francis in his letter Laudato Si, and the conflict between people of different ideologies and faiths in Fratelli Tutti, we are all brothers and sisters. Joseph Pollard, in his book, Finding Light, has this challenging paragraph in his reflection on the second Sunday after Christmas. Trite theology and panic prayers are not worthy of Christ and the Christian faith in an educated and questioning age. All of us need to prioritize Jesus, the Word of God, to us in our everyday agenda, and we need a seriously reflective engagement with the Gospels about the Word, so that we know, we may know, what it is to be human and how one achieves optimum personhood. Only then will we have an adult grasp on this Word that became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Only then will we have fitting adult experience that parallels John's. We ought to be able to say what he was able to say of himself and of other disciples. Of Christ's fullness, we have all had our share, love following upon love. That's John chapter 1, verse 16. There are many ways to respond to this challenge in prayer, reading and reflection. I recommend Bethany Mulvey's weekly notes for the year of the Word on the Sunday Scripture readings, which came about because she wanted to help all those who wished to understand the Scriptures better in the light of church teaching. You can reach Bethany on bethanymulvey55 at gmail.com. Oh,